most people in the world understand that this 21st century will be the Asian century. If the United States tries to contain China, you'll find that instead of the United States isolating China, the United States will find itself isolated from the rest of the world. And the main contest uh, between US and China will play out in the economic arena. And at the end of the day, uh, the winner will be seen to be the country with a bigger economy. Well, I think the it, it, interesting story about this book, uh, Asian 21st Century, is that um, when it came out as an open access book in the English language in January 2022, uh, the publisher expected only 20,000 downloads of the book. Uh, instead, uh, now there have been over 3 million downloads. So you can see the big gap between 20,000 and 3 million. So why have there been 3 million downloads of the book? And the simple answer is that most people in the world understand that this 21st century will be the Asian century. But they find that they cannot get information on it because the Western media refuses to accept the fact that the 21st century will be the Asian century. So they always keep telling you stories of why Asia is failing, uh, why China's economic growth is over, uh, why the Asians will keep fighting each other. So they'll only give you negative stories about Asia without trying to explain why is it that the fastest growing economies in the world over the last 20-30 years have been in Asia. The good news is that the countries in the global south understand this. Africans understand this, the Latin Americans understand this. To some extent, some Europeans uh, understand it. I think that France and Germany understand it. But there is, of course, resistance in the United States, especially to this idea. Because the United States would like to believe the 20th century was the American century, the 21st century should also be the American century. But that's very unrealistic because, you know, the 20th century was exceptional. Uh, in 1950, U.S. GNP was uh, almost 50% of the world's GNP. Now it's closer to 20%. So the American century is over and the Asian century is coming. So when you try to cut off trade ties with China, that's containment. When you try to stop the supply of chips to China, that's containment. Containment policy is real. The only question is whether it can work. And I, I will make a prediction confidently that the containment policy will fail because China has already integrated itself with the world more than the United States has. And more countries today do trade with China than they, did, than they do with the US. In the Cold War, it was the opposite. More countries traded with the US, less with Soviet Union. So now it's the opposite. And with that, because of that, if the, China, if the United States tries to contain China, you'll find that instead of the United States isolating China, the United States will find itself isolated from the rest of the world. Well, I think the main contest uh, between US and China will play out in the economic arena. And at the end of the day, uh, the winner will be seen to be the country with a bigger economy. And that's why it's a huge mistake uh, for the United States to spend so much time on boosting its military presence in East Asia because the contest will not be in the military dimension, it will be in the economic dimension. And when the United States made, uh, sadly, uh, the bad decision to withdraw from the TPP at a time when China had joined the RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, uh, the United States sadly didn't understand that the name of the game is economics and trade. And by not participating in these trade agreements across the Pacific, 
the United States was actually giving China an advantage in the main economic contest. And that's very unwise of the United States to do so.